is News Conference Extra with Conan Nolan. Good morning and welcome to News Conference Extra, a special segment of Today in L.A. Weekend. This week, the mayor of Los Angeles announced the opening of a trauma assistance shelter for 100 women in the Skid Row area of downtown. The mayor is saying there are now 151 supportive housing and temporary shelter projects that are fully funded, making up about 13,000 bedrooms and shared bedrooms. Several permanent housing projects are more than halfway finished. And that the city hopes to have 26 of its bridge home shelters open by the end of July. This, however, comes following a critical report from City Controller Ron Galpin, who said the pace of housing construction for the homeless through the $1.2 billion HHH bond issue is nearly three years late and failing to meet its goals. So who is right? Ron Galpin, the City Controller for the City of Los Angeles, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. I am really glad to see that some of those projects are finally, in fact, getting underway. Some of them are going to be opening. But what my audit was about was looking at the bond measure that was approved by voters nearly three years ago, Triple H as it's known, $1.2 billion for creating up to 10,000 permanent supportive housing units. What I found is that of that money, not one unit is actually completed yet. The median cost for those units, mostly efficiencies and one bedrooms, is about $531,000 and up to $700,000 per unit. So I've taken issue about the cost and also about how long it's taking to build. We knew it wasn't going to be cheap. We knew it wasn't going to be super fast, but this has taken a long time. Certainly, though, the mayor points out, and you've admitted, that the bond issue was there to pay for a portion of those units, such as about $150,000, and that developers would come up with the rest. Do we have that right? Well, actually, the city is funding about $140,000 for each of these projects. There's money that may be coming from the state, from other sources, also from various kinds of tax incentives, and from the developers themselves. But when your cost is that high per unit, you're not going to be able to build nearly as many units as we need to make the right dent in this crisis that we have of homelessness on our streets. The mayor says part of the problem is the fact they didn't expect, expect the cost of construction to go up. First of all, you can't even find uh, unionized workers. Uh, there's so much development taking place across the state and across the nation, for that matter. Plus, you have a trade problem with China, which increased the cost of steel. And then the tax code was changed that, it, that removed some of the incentives for businesses to invest in this kind of development. Do you buy that? Well, there are a lot of reasons why costs have gone up, but what we found was in our study of these projects that up to 40 percent of the costs are so-called soft costs. That's not land. That is not actual construction or materials. That's financing and consultants and all of those other so-called soft costs. That is really high, and it needs to be driven down. And we also need to find ways to have different kinds of paradigms. How do you have more shared housing, micro units? How do you do things that are prefab that you can do much more quickly? and cheaply. How much of the bureaucracy of the city still exists and is getting in the way? Well, the city's bureaucracy has, in fact, been getting in the way, but it's not just the cities, but all these other entities that have to weigh in when it comes to financing and approval. And many of the projects that have been conditionally approved at this point are far away from having a shovel in the ground. Now, the governor signed a bill that apparently gets rid of the California Environmental Quality Act when it comes to the building of this kind of uh, th these kind of shelters, how is that going to help? I think that's actually going to be very helpful. And those environmental protections are important, but they are also, in some cases, really getting in the way of getting something built. And if it takes years and years to build, that translates into lost lives on our streets, and it translates into a lot higher costs. Is there a ph philosophical difference as to what you should build taking place here? That is, there are some who say it's got to be temporary shelters, you've got to get people off the street now, and others say, I don't want to build something that I wouldn't want to live in myself. I think it's not either or. We have to do permanent supportive housing, and that can take time, and it's not inexpensive. However, there are people who are dying on our streets. The estimate is that 1,000 people will die on the streets of Los Angeles. So what are we doing to help them more immediately with imperfect solutions, but better than what we have on our streets Some right now? Some would say, listen, it's not about housing. People are dying on the street because the, the threshold for intervening for someone who's mentally ill and does not have the capacity to find help on their own is so high that, that 
that we don't do anything. We can't do anything until there's a knife to the throat. They're a threat to themselves or someone else. That's a very big part of it. And I've actually spoken to outreach workers and to so many others, and they point to that exact same problem. So much of this does have to do, in fact, with mental health and with addiction. But we also have to have places for those people who are suffering from mental illness to go into. And then one other thing we should remember, which is that if you haven't had a chance to take a shower or to wash your clothes for even a week, imagine what that's going to do to any of our mental health. How much of this is being tracked? The amount of money that is being spent, the $1.2 billion that came from the voters? Well, very little of that $1.2 billion has actually been spent to date. There's about 360 some million dollars of bonds that were issued and about $76 million dollars that has actually been spent. Why? Well, because you only are supposed to issue the bonds at such time that you've got an ability to spend it. And so many of these projects take so long to get approved, and all the projects need so many multiple levels of those approvals that it hasn't even been ready to be spent yet. Do you anticipate them going back to the voters again for another bond issue? Well, I think that it's really important that we fund these kinds of projects. But I think the voters really want to see and deserve to see the money being put to good use. And I'm really urging that there be some reconsideration of particularly some of the more expensive projects and how do we do this more quickly, more effectively, more cheaply. And then at some point when people go to the voters again, the voters would be more likely to say yes. Ron Galperin, the city controller for the city of Los Angeles, and a new father, I should point out, twins. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, they're how old now? They are six weeks old, and they are very, very sweet. And are you getting any sleep? A little bit. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming and congratulations. Thank you so much. NBC4's news conference at 9 o'clock is preempted this week by NBC Sports. We will be back with that program on Sunday, October 27th. I'm Conan Oldham. Have a great Sunday.